Three of us are from the Master Gardener program are going to be presenting today. I did want to tell you a little bit about Master Gardeners. We are part of the OSU Extension Service. We were started primarily to help the horticulture agents spread the word with research-based information. And so we do programs like this. We have different events throughout the year. I do want to mention that we have our annual workshop, Master Gardener Workshop, and that is scheduled for Saturday, March 11th at um, Lakeland Community College. We've had this for quite a number of years, uh, but unfortunately the last couple of years we've had to do it online. But this year we are very thankful that we're going to be able to be, come back together and we will have a full day's uh, agenda. We'll have speakers in the morning, speakers in the afternoon with lunch provided, continental breakfast uh, in the beginning of the day. And um, just stay, stay tuned for more information. There are handouts over here. Also, we are always interested in finding new master gardeners or training new master gardeners. And there's several of us here, several master gardeners here. We'll be glad to talk to you more about the program and any questions you might have. This is the next to the last Meet Us in the Garden for the season. We take a break during the winter season. Trust us, we are very busy right now working on the, the program for next year, but we hope to, and it should be back here under the same format. And we are very, very thankful to, that the library is willing to host us. So it's worked out to be a really good joint venture. As I indicated, there are three of us, and our objective for today, we want to help you think through the process for perhaps doing a re-landscaping job, or maybe it's just your first landscaping job. It's really the same process. This is going to be a little bit different than typical landscaping presentations because we're just going to be talking more about the process. And then we're going to share three different stories with you therefore the reason we have three people. Uh, <laughs> we have initially the story about the renovation of the Peace Garden at the fairgrounds, and Lori will be telling us about that, which is quite a story and a saga in itself. I'm going to be telling you about a small project that I did at my house for re-landscaping the uh, foundation plant, and Pat will finish with uh, a very interesting presentation about how she solved problems at her when she moved into a, a you, I'll call them previously owned house. <laughs> anyway, so let, let's just get started. So why are you even considering re-landscaping? There's just so many reasons that you might think about. Well, some of the most important, or not important, but reasons, primary reasons, is something has changed in your yard. You know, maybe you've taken down some trees. Maybe you've planted some trees. Maybe you have a, a new structure, a garage or shed, or your neighbor put up a privacy fence, and so suddenly you have a lot of this, uh, you know different uh, sun exposure in your backyard. Maybe your landscape is overgrown, and I will trust me. I will show you an example of an <laughs> overgrown <laughs> uh, landscape. Are your plants just aren't thriving. They aren't blooming like they're supposed to, or if they're a blooming plant, they're getting leggy. They've been in there for a long time. They're just getting old, like some of us are. <laughs> <laughs> or maybe you just like, are, hey, I'm tired of this. I want something new. There's a lot of new plants available. You know, how can I use those? So there's, there's a lot of reasons that you might want to consider doing some landscaping. Other considerations that you need to think about as you approach your job is how much money do I can I spend? You know, is this something that I'm going to be able to do most of myself, coming up with my design, putting the work in, prepare the soil, and all of the things that are necessary? A number of years ago, I, had a pre I saw a presentation by a, a gentleman that was talking about landscaping and redoing your yard, and he indicated Think about how long you're going to be in the house. And I thought, hmm, I never thought of that. But uh, really, uh, let, you want to kind of think through, is this some place that I imagine that I will be here for another 20 years? Is this a place that I'm kind of trying just to refresh because I'm probably planning to put it on the market in a couple years? 
you know, there would be a different approach to what you wanted to do, depending upon that. So keep that in mind. Is this going to be a complete redo? Am I just going out there and tearing everything out so I get to see what the space? That's kind of, that's pretty bold. <laughs> so perhaps what you want to approach it is, okay, I have this space, I don't like it, there's some reason I don't like it. Remove those plants that are really bugging you. You know, they're, they're looking leggy, they aren't blooming, they are overgrown, they are just what, you know, they're just, I'm tired of looking at that plant, <laughs> particularly if it's not performing as well as I would like. So start, small, start out initially, just remove those plants. You know, okay, I just don't like this evergreen, it's so out of shape, it's uh, dying from the bottom up or whatever, you know. Remove those plants first, then step back and say, okay, now what do I have left? You know, maybe you've re already removed everything, but maybe you still have some things left. What do I really like? What do I think I want to keep? What will fit in if I put in new materials, which probably are going to be relatively small compared to many landscaping plants? So you, then you just kind of keep approaching the process until you decide, okay, this is what the palette, this is this what is it, landscape that I have and I, what I can do with it. Perhaps you have a plant that your grandma, it, it was a cutting from your grandma's something or other, and you, that's really dear to you. You want to keep that. Or perhaps you have a plant that you planted as a memorial to someone. And, you know, those things, type things, you, generally speaking, you're going to want to keep. So spend some time really hard looking at your landscaping and judging it. Okay, now that you've decided, okay, this is the space I'm going to work in. Is it a whole new yard? Is it a, a bed? Maybe it's a new bed that you want to put in, or maybe it's a bed you just want to rejuvenate. One of the mo most important things is make sure you understand the light that you have in that space. Now, we can all say, oh, well, my front yard's always sunlight. Well, let's check for sure. What I suggest is, over the course of maybe a few days, go out in the morning and write down the time and say, hmm, that, that's still in the shade. Or, oh, the sun's shining brightly. Just kind of make a log so you actually do the, do, you know, do, and do this in the spring, early summer. You know, that's when the sun's the highest and, and, and such. So just kind of make a log because a lot of times you'll discover Hmm, I thought that was in the sunlight a lot, but gee, the trees have gotten really big, and they didn't really, do, you know, it's three o'clock in the afternoon before the sun is, you know, fully uh, uh, lighting that particular space. Or maybe it's, oh, by 11 o'clock, you know, the, the sun is, you know, because of the uh, trees and stuff like that. So, you know, just uh, uh, take the time. We want to always have a water source near our proper or near where you're landscaping and of course that's just you know where do you have your faucets are you going to have to drag hoses multiple feet whatever you know certainly take assessment of like I mentioned you know, existing structures you know because shade they can cause shade and uh, or sunlight or lack of thereof for sunlight how much time and how much effort do I really have to do this project maybe this is something that you're, you're just gonna turn over to a landscaper, but you've gotta make sure they're, they're doing their job correctly too. <laughs> uh, so, and that means, you know, understanding what the, the nature of this, the area that you're trying to, uh, to re-landscape. Maybe you're gonna do it all, you know, whatever, you know, but be realistic. You know, am I gonna be able to, is this gonna take a lot of pruning? That's one of the things a lot of people forget about. Or, you know, so, just be realistic about it and then know your the type of your soil and the moisture is this a boggy place is this a hot dry place in the afternoon is it a shady place but it's moist is it a shady place that is dry you know, there's a lot of dry uh, dry shade places that we have to consider 
Okay, so now we've got some of, some of the background information that we're kind of assess, assess. We always want to do a soil test. Master gardeners will always include that in their presentations, essentially. What is the purpose of a soil test? It's going to test, tell you characteristics of your soil that you cannot determine by just looking at it. So uh, what we typically do is we recommend that you send a, prepare a sample and send it off to one of the uh, university or uh, college or, uh, test labs, most uh, like o well, OSU does not have any themselves anymore, but Penn State, Michigan State, Massachusetts, you can go on the website, you can get information about how you do it, the, they'll tell very clear information about how to select your uh, sample, where to send it, how much it's going to cost, the kind of tests you want, and things like that. And if you need any more, if somebody has urgent questions, we'll be glad, one of us will be glad to help you talk th uh, through that after this presentation. And the purpose is that it, you know, it comes back and it tells you, you know, what's the pH of your soil? Uh, it tells you what do I need, what elements do I need to put down to improve that soil? I also, I recommend, I always include, most of them do just a basic test, and I think Penn State's is 10, is it still $10 as far as you can get them from the OSU office? Yeah, we, uh, the OSU office has the, the packet that you would need to do the test. And if you have problems, once you get your results back, and you, it's sometimes a little bit difficult to understand, uh, they, they are making it better, but uh, uh, give the helpline and we'll have some information about the helpline at the end of the presentation. We have uh, where there's a few hours a week where there's people available in the office to answer questions but then how to leave question, uh, questions and we'll get back to you. So you've really put some effort into thinking about the conditions of the soil, uh, the location where I'm planning to redo. We've got the soil test done got the information back. Now the whole purpose of all the studying about the condi growing conditions is plants, all plants have their optimum growing condition. How do I know what that is? Number one, read the label. Sometimes it's not real true but you know <laughs> we'll talk about that but but it gives you a clue so you want to make sure that you do the research. You know, there's so much information uh, available. Go to the nurse, local nurseries, look at the plants and say, oh, I really like that. No, not that one. You know, make sure you understand how big the plant is supposed to get because that's so clear. You know, you're looking at a plant and it's about this big around and you think, oh, well, that's a little... Well, you read the label, and, oh, this is a tree that gets to be 70 feet tall uh, <laughs> with a, a canopy of 50 feet, you know. Does, does that plant fit in your space? Does it have the same, does it have the same requirements as your, the, the uh, soil and uh, everything that you have? So you, you, we know the plant characteristics, we know the plant your, your growing conditions that you have. We want to match. So it is so easy to fall in love with that beautiful shade, or beautiful sunny location plant. And you say, I just have to have it. From personal experience, I have done this multiple times <laughs> over the years. I have lots of shade and I have more shade than I had 25 years ago. So, <laughs> you know, sometimes you just have to suck it up and go with the plant that will fit into your location. Just some helpful hints. We want to make sure the plant is hardy for our zone and that's raised roughly the six or five and a half or what five B, five B, six type thing perhaps changing with time. We recommend if you can and you like them to use native plants because they're going to thrive much better in this environment because they are native to this environment. Or perhaps you're looking at a specific cultivar and 
if possible, again, you read the label because sometimes the label usually has some information about whether it's disease resistant, maldu resistant, blah, you know, all kinds of different things. So, so if possible, select the disease resistant uh, portions. Lori is now going to tell you about our first story. Peace Garden started in 2005 with a request from our former 4-H director to have a peace pole installed in a small plot in front of the 4-H uh, building at the Lake County Fairgrounds. The idea was presented to the Master Gardener group, uh, to the gardeners who jumped at the idea and came up with a plan beyond the basic wish. A design was approved by the fair board with hints that they too would add amenities such as a concrete sidewalk and a new entry to the building. Requests for special plants and shrubs went out to master gardeners, friends, 4-H parents, and local nurseries. The result was that a boatload of items were planted that same summer. The purpose of the Peace Garden has become to enhance the fairgrounds, to teach and encourage anyone interested in landscaping, and to present new ideas. From 20, 2005 to 2019, improvements were made over the 14 years as exciting new plants were discovered, unique garden art and featured plants were incorporated. Maintenance was done weekly from April to October by master gardeners. For the first few years, the 4-H kids with their supervisors helped to weed out the garden until the thrill was gone. <laughs> Between 2019 and 2020, during the COVID-19 years, the building was replaced and two-thirds of the garden was plowed up. 2021, a new design was drawn up for the remaining devastated area east of the entrance and all along the face of the building. 2022, new and different shrubs and perennials, even plant identification tags, gave the garden a new look. The original master plan covered the entire front of the building. Consideration was given to avoid or hide overhead wires and to deal with the extreme water problem caused by no gutters and have plenty of curved walkways, a play area for kids, seating as a respite from the noisy fair, fencing, and an attractive entry exit to the building. A list of desired plants and trees was made up after the plan was laid out. A soil test indicated the need to improve the sandy soil, so truckloads of groganics were tilled into the entire garden area. Groganics is treated organic sewage obtained at low cost from the Lake County Solid Waste Facility. Note the drawbacks visible in the picture. You can see the poles, you can see wires, no gutters, a bad entry. In fact, the bad entry, you stepped right into a puddle of water. <laughs> Plain face of the building, standing water, no place to sit or walk. What you can't see is the compacted ground because it was often used as a parking lot. 4-H kids and parent, a parent are digging out a pathway within the marker stones according to the plan. This is the shadier side with initial plants and dry creek bed installed to take care of water runoff. Stones along the foundation at the drip line carry rainwater and allow for maintenance of the building. The curved path is four feet wide to allow for two people to walk together and when trees are grown, gives the pedestrian a hopeful view of what's ahead, and thus a little mystery. This slide shows problem areas of, of the no gutters and utility poles which needed to be disguised. In a short time, the mulberry trees were obs obscured the pole and overhead wires and created a play area for children. The rainwater was dispersed within the stones of the dry creek bed. 
The peace pole was prominently centered in the entry patio. Languages chosen are Spanish, Finnish, Czech, and English, the languages of Lake County. Also shown is the new entrance. By 2015, we had a beautiful and mature mulched garden to explore. This paper bark, maple, also called Asa Grissom, should have been on wheels as it would soon be moved. I feel that way about so many of my plants. <laughs> I come away a year later asking, why did I do that? <laughs> Does that happen to you too? 2019, midsummer, we had a beautiful presentation for the county fair in 2019. <clears throat> Just weeks later, we would be informed that the building would be demolished, as well as most of the garden. We would have cried, except we were in shock. <laughs> a lonely, weeping, fruitless mulberry speaks to a ruined garden. How fitting that it was weeping. <laughs> the second picture shows barren ground framing the new building as it goes up a little closer than our original boundary, and much to our disbelief, covering the creek bed. <laughs> Note the change to the design of the replacement structure. The old walkway becomes a sea of cement with no place for the peace pole. The walkway divides the garden from half shade to complete sun in the, in the <coughs> 2005 garden on the right. Utility wires and one pole were reduced. Gutters on the building relieved the water problem. Two mulberry trees were removed to allow light into new windows, and the size of this shady garden was reduced by one third. This is the new plan for replacing plants in the area destroyed during construction. We wanted to say that uh, this big area right here is the, the new building. This is a brick walkway, and all of this is cement. We used to have garden all across here. So, gone. <laughs> to regress a bit, this is the garden in the spring of 2021 in its infancy on the right, while the two scenes on the left are of the old garden in front. Again, the old and new as perennials were added through the season. Here are more pictures <clears throat> for your enjoyment. The story has a happy ending as we realized how badly we needed to change the contents of the garden. And I want to leave you with a thought. We are not telling you what to put in your garden, but what to look for to change what you have. Keep an open mind. And finally, Visit the garden. It's open to the public at all times. You'll find a list of plant materials used. It's in our comment box that's fastened to the remaining uh, telephone pole, which is way over on the right. Thank you for being so attentive. <laughs> OK, uh, story two, number two, is about my yard. I do want to mention, Lori is the one who came up with the plan for the uh, Peace Garden, and she has been the person who sort of organizes our activities with the help of a number of master gardeners. So thanks to Lori for a good job. <laughs> okay, this is a friend of my house in my before picture, and actually, when I put this up here, I thought, oh my gosh, how embarrassing. I'm supposed to be a master gardener. <laughs> There's a lot of things that need to be fixed there. This all started because I had some trees removed because we wanted to grow some grass in our front yard. We really had a, and we, well, we still don't have a wonderful grass. That's not my thing. But anyway, I basically had the trees over here. There were a great big spruce tree here our development, we had to plant nine spruce trees within the half, uh, first six months of, uh, in front of your front house. This, we'd been in the house for about 20, 
three years at this point. So you know, c you can imagine what size spruce trees were in front of the house. So we had those removed, and that's just started a, started a cascade of events. The, the light was completely different down here at the end of the house. And I had rhododendrons and azaleas there. And the rhododendrons and azaleas said, whoa, I'm not used to this amount of light. They were, became very scorched. They were, they really, really were looking tacky. That was what, you know, one day I just said, I've got to start over. You know, just, you know, I've got to do something different. In addition, you can see that some of the plants were out of scale to the house. My wonderful ar arbovitae, which said it was going to get eight feet tall, chose to get 15 feet tall. So this, then there was the shrubs that were right on the sidewalk there by the steps. I had to hack those back constantly. They also were much larger than they were supposed to be. And it was very, you know, it really is not very welcoming to have this big mass right around your front door. So, you know, just all the plant, many of the plants were too big. Some of them were getting leggy. Some of the ground covers were getting overgrown. Basically, plants were out of control. So I just kind of decided, you know, it's time to do something dram uh, just, uh, dramatic to, uh, to make th some improvements here. So what did I do? First of all, I am not a designer. I am a plant nerd. So I asked the young man to do some uh, work in the yard earlier, and I asked him to take a look at the front yard a front of the landscaping in front of the house and just come up with a plan that kind of gave me where plants could be, high plants, low plants, different things. And I told him, I said, I'm going to be pick out the plants. You uh, give me just sort of an outline of what could be there. So we removed the plants and we did keep one plant because it was a memorial tree. We did the soil test. Fact is, being somewhat obsessive, I did two soil tests on the s different sections just because there were different growing conditions in the different sections of the yard. Then I selected those specific plants that I had gone to the nursery and, you know, at, for, fortunately I went to the nursery and was able to actually pick out the plant, which they held for me when, when we were ready to plant. And then, of course, we had it installed and mulched. Now, this is what was initially planted, and it does look very stark, obviously very different from what it was, but in the process of uh, removing the plants from the front of the house, I suddenly discovered, oh, I kind of like the way the front of my house looks, and I haven't seen it for several years, you know, because everything was so overgrown. And when my son came up to visit right after the planting was done, he says, well, mom, when did you become a minimalist? <laughs> and it does kind of look that way, but I still am very pleased with it because I, I feel that it just opens up the house a great deal. This was the last year in September. This is what it is right now. Uh, you can see that it's filling in a little bit. It, you know, I intended to put plants in that weren't going to get as big. You know, I didn't want to cover the house as much as I had done previously, probably unintentionally covering it, but anyway. Uh, and I've added some annuals for color and some perennials, I've put in a couple of perennials. So anyway, what I'm trying to show you here is, you know, take a look at your, whatever the space is that you're looking at, figure out what you want to do, and then basically go through the process, assessing the uh, conditions, doing the soil test, knowing your plants, matching your plant to those growing conditions. Okay, now we will have Pat. My story is altogether different. In 2015, I was living in Ashtabula County with my husband, and he very suddenly, unexpectedly passed away. So, I decided very quickly, I was 85, I decided very quickly that the smart thing for me to do was to move to Painesville, where I have two grown sons. That way, if I get in trouble, why, they can help me out, I hope. <laughs> so, took me a year. In 2016, I moved into a little brick bungalow 
over on um, over off uh, 84 by Riverside High. It's a nice little house. This picture though was taken the year, the next year in the spring because I moved in there in November. And the house was built in 1950. It faces due west so I get afternoon sun in the front and I get morning sun in the back. It's very bright. I had a huge maple in there that I didn't picture because I was sending the picture to, uh, I didn't include it in the picture because I was sending the picture to relatives that I wanted to show where I had moved to. This picture though was taken in the spring and if you can see on the side there are rhododendrons that are in bloom. They had built a bed there, two pavers high on that side of the house, and they planted two large rhododendrons, two expiry azaleas, and the one azalea is pinched in between the roadies, so it's growing straight up. <laughs> on the very far edge, south end of the bed, you can't see it, but it curved out, and they had a lot of daylilies planted in there. On this end, near that white post, there's a lilac tree. The lilac was growing as high as the gutters on my house. It was looking for the sun because of that maple shade, and it was growing at about a 45 degree angle. It was actually looked like the roots were coming out of the ground. But behind that lilac was also a huge black boulder. It was very, very large. I figure it came out when they dug the basement for the house, and so people didn't know exactly what to do with them, but there were several rocks on the house, on the property. In front of the porch, they, they built that flower bed. It's two pavers high, like I said. It, at the white post, there's this big black boulder behind the lilac. I figure it's got to go. The lilac had to go. The lilac was sterile. It didn't attract pollinators, never ever set seeds. Wasn't very pretty because all the flowers were up so high, so that had to go. The house came with irrigation, and I was absolutely ignorant about irrigation, except that I knew you had to blow it out or it would freeze. So I decided I would leave the irrigation for a couple years and see what was growing in the yard, because I'd moved in in November and nothing, you know, the growing season had passed. The porch is in the next, yeah. If you will notice in this picture, the step is a little bit green. There's part of the lilac going up. There's a cute little kitty down there on this step. <laughs> <laughs> Not my kitty. Um, and if you'll notice, the walkway is muddy looking. There's a, a quarter a uh, circle flower bed at the driveway and the sidewalk, front sidewalk. In there they had planted uh, a midi rose, um, white midi rose and a white tea rose and a bunch of daylilies. And you can see at the bottom there, there's the stone. And actually there's another one over further. They're not as big as the boulder behind the lilac, but they're good sized rocks, I'm not moving. But I decided that would be a nice bed to feed the birds. So I uh, put up my shepherd's hooks, my bird feeders, and that's when I found we had cats. <laughs> lots and lots of feral cats. So it made me a little bit miserable. I decided I had to remove the cover or change where I was feeding the birds. It wasn't gonna work. There was another large boulder on the property, but I didn't take a picture of it because I wasn't planning on doing this beach, but that <laughs> boulder was way down in the front yard near the road. And my neighbor told me that previous owner of my house was a serious bodybuilder. Went to contests and everything. And he used to pick that boulder up and walk up and down the street with it. <laughs> I would love to have seen that. Boulder is supposed to weigh 300 pounds. So, would have been impressive. 
in 2018, I got brave and I finally called the uh, company that installed the irrigation. And they were very nice. They sent me out a man who shut, uh, started it up, checked all the irrigation heads. There were three across and three down, three down by the driveway, three in the middle, three at the south lot line. He got it working and it was nice. But I found right away that when that bodybuilder set that stone down the last time, he put it right in front of an irrigation head. So the water came out of the irrigation, hit the rock, and didn't do anything for the yard. Also, back here, where this, there's about four inches, and there's an irrigation head right about, we know, down further. Yeah, right about in there. When that irrigation head would kick on, it would hit those pavers. It couldn't clear the pavers. It would splash water back onto the step, which made it green, and mud on the walk, which made a mess. So I figured out, what, what am I going to do with this mess? Well, I have a son that has an excavation company. Grown, grown boy. But I went very nicely and I said, son, would you please come move my four rocks? All I need is four rocks moved, but I can't move them. Would you come? Well, it took me two years of motherly coercion. <laughs> and he finally showed up one morning out of the blue, didn't call me and tell me he was coming. I'm getting my breakfast coffee. I look outside, I got a semi in front of the drive. But he brought this nice machine. Now, it's not real big. It's big enough, but it's not real big. It has tracks, go back. It has tracks, so it doesn't have wheels to cut rocks or cut ruts in the ground. It rode nicely on the tracks. He drove it up the driveway, which kept part of the ground. But it was March when he showed up. I wanted him to come in winter when it was frozen. It had snow cover, you know, all that. But it was March when he showed up. Still, I didn't say a word. <laughs> the, the digger part, I figured he was going to dig the soil. I was, going to have a hole where the rock had been, and when he'd set the uh, rock down in the new place, I was going to have extra dirt. Not so. He's got this little lever up there, and acts like a thumb, so he could go down, he could pick up the rock like that, carry it, set it down. It was slick. I didn't have any holes except for the bodybuilders, and the bodybuilder's rock had left a big hole down in the front. <laughs> But that was the only one. The others were just kind of depressions. So it went real slick. I don't think he spent an hour doing it. He, he probably spent more time loading the machine, driving over, unloading the machine. But I said, thank you very much. <laughs> First thing out of his mouth was, where do you want the rocks? And I said, well, son, I didn't really make a plan. I didn't expect him. So I didn't make a plan. So I said, please, I want them on the surface roots of this maple tree because driving over those surface roots with that little lawnmower tractor, John Deere 125, smallest mower they make. But driving over those roots was worse than going over rumble, stick, uh, rumble strips and parking lots or worse than going over bad railroad uh, crossings. It was terrible. So I was bouncing all over like crazy. So I said, I want you to keep it about two feet out from the tree so I don't, you know, the tree can grow. I want you to give me room from this end of the rock to the uh, paver bed so that I can get the mower in there so I can mow the rest of the grass. And I, I don't care how you set them. So he did. Now, pros and cons. I end up with a container garden. I'm going to do this on the cheap because I didn't know if I was going to enjoy it or not or like it or not. So I bought a few very inexpensive plastic urns. I um, didn't go to a nursery. 
I didn't bother with the soil test because I used potting soil out of the bag. <coughs> the only thing I did pay attention to was the sunlight. And of course, I got morning sunlight at that end of the bed, afternoon sunlight at that end of the bed. And during the day, it's completely uh, shaded. It, it worked out very easily. But there are pros and cons. And the pro is, of course, I didn't pay for a soil test, and I did it cheap. Uh, weeding was a breeze. There were almost no weeds. Insects, for some reason or other, didn't bother it. But on the other hand, hose. I had a terrible time with the hose. Carol mentioned that the flexible hoses are real nice, so I went out and bought the cheapest one I could because I didn't know if I was going to like that or, or at all. My spigot on the house was on the other side of the house, so it was a long distance, took 50 feet. I bought the cheapest, like I said, flexible hose over at Ollie's I could find. I think I spent $20. It lasted for a year and a half. <laughs> And then this spring, it blew, well, no, it was in August, it blew a hole near the spigot, blew a hole out of it, so I had to throw the hose away. So then I get out this rubber hose. Now, I bought this rubber hose, paid a lot of money for it, wasn't supposed to kink. Kinks in at least three spots. So lugging the hose over there. And you do have to water it quite often because it'll, you know, the pots will dry out. You can put your um, house plants out there for this summer. Works nicely. Cons. I had a terrible time with deer. I didn't think I would have a terrible time with deer. But this week, on Wednesday, I saw three does eating across the street in my neighbor's yard. So, I mean, they, they're bedded down, down by the river, I'm sure, and they just come up and eat. And so I went out and I bought a nice big potted plant, chrysanthemums, pretty white flowers all over. Lasted one night, went out the next day. The plant is in fine condition. Every white flower is gone. Uh, I think I have trouble with raccoons, not sure real sure that it's raccoons, but they pull the plant out. They'll take and remove the plant from the pot and then dig around in it. I suppose it could be skunks, because skunks will dig, you know, for, for grubs in the ground. But anyway, deer, raccoons, maybe skunks. But other than that, it works out pretty good. Didn't cost <laughs> me too much. And if you don't get, well, I put in um, hanging baskets. Deer can't reach those. <laughs> so I had chrysanthemums up there and I had impatience and they did real well. But that's it. Problem solved. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> so to kind of recap, if you're thinking about a project, spend some time planning it, thinking, developing your plan. Make sure you do a soil test. Select the right plants for the right spot, the right conditions. And make sure when you're doing new landscaping, water, water, water. You know, it, it, at least for a couple of years to get those plants well established. Uh, like this, you know, this season when we get, went through the droughty part of the season, you know, I was out there watering it, it you know, quite frequently and everything. So just to kind of recap, oh. If you do have questions, and this is something that uh, maybe if you want to do a screenshot or something, our helpline is available April through October on Tuesday mornings from 9 o'clock to t 11 o'clock. Somebody will be in the office at that time to take your calls. Obviously, uh, not everybody's available to call at that particular time or your problem comes up uh, another time. Do call this number, leave a voicemail with your phone number and just a brief ex ex uh, explanation of your question. Um, someone, we have a team that will ch uh, check the voicemail throughout the week and uh, 
perhaps usually give you a call because they have more questions that they're asking and then um, will help you solve your problems particularly like if you're on your soil test or something like that there's no all, all kinds of problems that you might have of course there's so much information on the internet but I do have a, a helpful hint for you you want to filter out you want to make sure you're getting good research-based information and to do that if you go to your search bo box Google Foxfire or whatever you use put in your question and then type university extension afterwards as an example if you want your question was about mulching tomatoes and then university extension what that's going to do is bring up all the land-grant colleges and their extension programs and you know, university information and uh, you know and uh, you know that's a very good way to get uh, uh, research-based information and not just get all the advertisements and everything that everybody has to offer so again thank you very much if you have questions we'd be glad to help you yeah.